Glory to you, O God. You raised Jesus from the grave, bringing victory over death and giving us eternal life. Glory to you, Jesus Christ. For us and for our salvation, you overcame death and opened the gates to everlasting life. Glory to you, Holy Spirit, who leads us into truth and breathes into us new life. Glory to Father, Son and Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Welcome to evening prayer. You will have seen that today it is crosses and there are many inspirations for this, the cross at the centre of our faith. The crosses stitched together in prayer for our ecumenical friends and the relationships that we continue to build and prayers for unity across Christianity. But also there are some reflections on a hill of crosses in uh, northern Lithuania. And so today I'm going to read one that we normally hear in Lent of the account of Jesus in the temple or clearing the temple from John's Gospel, John chapter 2, beginning at verse 13. The Passover of the Jews was near and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling doves, take these things out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Some years ago, I bought a, a, a glass plaque covered in crosses and there was a story with it from the person that had made it, who was telling me of a village in Lithuania where crosses are mounted onto a hill, often crosses remembering people, sometimes just simple prayers and a sign of faith to those around. And over many years, different regimes have, have challenged these crosses standing there, wanting to get rid of religious symbols and have taken them down, removed them and taken them away. However, every time this happens, more and more crosses appear. And these days it's a place of pilgrimage. Over recent years, there have been a few cases of people being challenged about wearing a cross in their workplace. Because as a sign of faith, it's deemed by some to be offensive. And whilst that brings a great deal of sadness and disappointment, it also brings me back to those words about the destroying of this temple. Why is it offensive? If people have no faith all this time on, why would they be bothered by a symbol of faith? Those regimes tearing down the crosses, insulted by them, wanting people to worship them perhaps rather than worship a living God. And Jesus points out that the temple will be raised in three days as he speaks of his body. 
but not only will it be raised in three days, but it will be um, forever that Jesus is alive and with us. So often we wear an empty cross symbolising resurrection and hope. The sign of the cross endures. The temple was rebuilt. The temple is rebuilt day by day as people come to the cross. And so we come to an enduring symbol. That all this time on still means so much central to our faith but a symbol that unites, a symbol that challenges, yes, but a symbol that unites God's people as part of his body. Maybe we want to reflect a little bit more on the crosses we look at and where and how we share that with others. So we continue in prayer. Let's pray. In the power of the resurrection, we offer our prayers to God. So, Lord, we lift before you in your love, your church throughout the world. May your whole church know your power and be a sign that Christ is risen.
we live before you. Those that we share our journey with, our partners along the way, around the circuit, in ecumenical groups and further beyond. Through our lives, our relationships and our actions, may our communities be transformed by mercy and speak of hope. We remember before you those in need of our prayers. We remember especially those who are ill, those who are experiencing loss, those who are victims of violence and injustice. May each one find comfort, strength and healing in you. We remember those who have shared their love for you with us. Those who have been a channel of grace. And we thank you for them. We ask that all your children may find grace and light according to their needs. Touch each one with your blessing, with your shelter. So gracious God, hear our prayers as we offer them united with the words of the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So may God strengthen us, walk with us, hold us, lead us and guide us. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this night and always. Amen. <laughs>